Welcome in to Fact Finder Investigates. I'm Dylan Doming. If you're in the market to buy a used car, beware. The damage left behind from Hurricanes Helene and Milton can be felt across the nation, including here in Kansas. Despite being thousands of miles away, flood damaged cars still find their way onto used car lots here in Wichita. Devastating flooding in the southeast left many areas underwater. Looking back here. Now, automotive experts warn those flood damaged vehicles could soon flood the used car market. We're a long way from the coast, e any coast, so we don't. On top of the more than 450,000 water damaged vehicles that were reported just last year. There's not a big tag on the side or even a small sticker that says, hey, I was previously in a flood. So, what are the signs that car buyers should look out for? Lowell Toothman with LT Auto in Wichita explains. What you want to look for is there'll be a residue back here on the firewall. You'll see a line basically where the water level was. If you, if you look, you'll see kind of a consistent line that goes around this whole thing. And it's not just under the hood where you should check. Well, what you want to look for is like right over here on the side, same thing. You want to, in fact, you can see some right there. That's, the, that's what it looks like. It's ocean water, and ocean water has salt in it, and salt leaves a white crust behind. And even if you don't see corrosion, the smell of mildew could be a red flag. LT says another sign that the car may have been previously damaged is if it's on sale for a cheaper price. There are some people who are, you know, they're out there to make a dollar, you know. Anytime you have high leverage transactions like this, you want to make sure that all of your questions are realistically answered. The Better Business Bureau says scammers are trying to pass off water damaged cars as regular used cars, which, while at first might sound like a good deal, could lead to you paying thousands of dollars down the road in repairs. You don't want to buy a lemon, and a lot of folks are left uh, holding lemons when they purchase vehicles from impacted regions. LT warns in the next six months, he expects thousands of flooded out cars from Florida to end up in lots in Kansas. Th this part of the country will just, they'll be everywhere. So the question is, how can you protect yourself? Well, you can type the VIN number of the car you're looking at online. A site like Carfax should show prior damage, but sometimes it isn't always reported. So you can take the car to a local maintenance shop where you can get a second opinion from an expert. We have an update to a proposed wind farm project as well that could soon be put on hold for at least two years. It's a story that Fact Finder followed from the start as Hope Ridge Wind Project looks to install a 334 megawatt wind farm in multiple townships. Thursday, the county's planning commission voting six to one in favor of a two-year moratorium on that project. The recommendation now goes to the Dickinson County Commission for a final decision. A man charged with first-degree murder in Wichita back in custody after police say he cut off his ankle monitor and fled to Mexico. Eric Gonzalez Gutierrez was arrested for first-degree murder back on June 16th. He posted $1 million bond and was subsequently released from custody. Less than one week later, police said he cut off his ankle monitor and then disappeared. But this week, police announcing that Gutierrez was arrested in Mexico and is being extradited back to Wichita. But how does a man charged with first-degree murder be allowed to post bond and then flee the country? Well, legal experts say that $1 million bond is very high, and it is rare that people charged with first-degree murder are actually able to post it. Former U.S. Attorney for the District of Kansas, Barry Grissom, says that bond is set this high to ensure that the defendant returns to court. A million dollars, uh, and probably understanding what that individual's financial resources were at the time, uh, probably gave that judge some comfort that he would be returning because... Uh, he, he didn't want to put his family at risk or himself at risk of being out, um, that bondsman being out a million dollars. So, uh, yes, it's, it's high, but I think it was appropriate. Now, in this instance, Gutierrez was only required to post 1% of that bond, $10,000, to be released from custody. Now, as of July 1st, defendants are required to post 10% bond to be released from custody rather than just 1%. I want to know why. I really want to know what happened. A mother and a grandmother still grieving, demanding answers after her son and grandson were killed in a wrong way crash on K96 in East Wichita last month. Backfinder 12 now has that crash report. Investigator Brandon said providing new details, but it's not the details and the answers that this mom wants to hear. I miss the craziness, the 3 o'clock 
did the morning phone call and talked for two and a half hours. And Lavetta just, Henriksen reflects on the memories of her son, Randall, and grandson, Eli. Little things from, like, little Eli would send me a text sometimes in the morning saying, have a good day, Grandma. It was this wrong way driver crash that killed Randall and Eli. Dash cam from another car captured everything. The driver going the wrong way also killed. And losing a child is, I can't even describe that pain, but my grandbaby too. In this 15 page report from KHP, troopers say the wrong way driver braked just before hitting Randall and Eli. We also learned the data recorders from the vehicles were too damaged to be downloaded. And the autopsy that would also provide toxicology is still pending. I want to know why she killed my son and my grandson. I don't get it. It's an I, answer I, for Lavetta that she knows will be hard to hear. But it's one she knows will help process a loss that she will feel you know, just, forever. You never get to see them again if they're gone forever. And it's devastating, devastating. I really miss him a lot. And still now, there are a lot of questions that need to be answered. There's nothing in that report about what the driver of the wrong way car was doing before that crash or if there was any indication of impairment. That could come later, though, through an autopsy report, a report that could still take weeks to complete. A message from Newton Police making sure you don't fall for this scam here. Police saying that they've taken multiple reports of people receiving a threatening email. In that message, a scammer says that the cameras on your computer or your smartphone are activated and that you're being watched. It says they know what to do in private and websites that you visit or what you do in private. Now, they threaten to release that footage if you don't pay in Bitcoin. The scammer says that they have an, your address and in one case, even sent, a, even sent a picture of the victim's house taken from Google. Now, if you do receive an email like this, delete it or block the sender and just don't respond to them. So to come a call for change as juveniles escape secure detention facilities across the country, we investigate gaps with how escapees are tracked and explore a model for reform. Do pixels